morning, church, and welcome to another lovely Sunday. Um, let me just read to you from John chapter 8. It's one verse, um, but it's a verse I think we take for granted sometimes. Um, and I pray that we would grasp it, its significance this morning. Um, it says, Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And that's my prayer, and that's our prayer for you this morning, is that we would walk in that light. We're going to sing about that light um, by singing Endless Light.
this place today, wherever it is that we may be right now, God. We know that you are with us.
to see your kingdom come. Take this life. Brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. This is your spiritual act of worship. Have you ever been for a drive, looked around and thought, how on earth did I end up here? I once went through the same toll booth three times. I hadn't had my license very long and I'd looked at the paper GPS, remember, street directories? I'd had it all worked out. I knew to go through the toll and then turn off. But as I turned off, it just didn't quite seem right. So I pulled over, looked at the map again, where did I go wrong? Where am I? How do I get back on track? After thinking I'd worked it out, I recircled the same path another two times. And then on the verge of tears, I finally worked out the problem and arrived at my destination. I'm not sure if I was just daft or inexperienced, but either way, it was an expensive trip. Now we've got these fandangled GPSs on our phones that have a voice that can tell us where to go. It's the only time that a voice telling us where to go is good, right? But you know, the same thing happens for me in life. In spite of my best intentions and thinking that I'm all prepared for the journey, I still sometimes look around and think, how did I get here? How great would it be if we could have a GPS for life? A voice to say, turn left here, continue along this path. Yes, take the job. No, don't move house. Take the blue pill, back up, avoid that situation. Be kind to that person. How tricky life can feel when we're doing it alone or just don't know what we're doing. In John 10, Jesus says that he is the good shepherd. This could seem a little weird to you, especially when us Aussies think of a sheepdog rounding up sheep and pushing them into a pen. But in Jesus' day, 
A Middle Eastern shepherd led their flocks by beckoning them. The shepherd was devoted to his sheep. He'd even risk his life for them. They'd talk to their sheep, they'd name them, sing to them. So the sheep knew the voice of their shepherd. They knew that they were being called into something greater and they'd follow that voice. We see this idea in John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Because the sheep knew the shepherd's voice, he was able to lead them to their best life, to good water, tasty food, the shade of a tree for rest, even into safety. The shepherd would call and the sheep would follow, which kind of made the shepherd the GPS for the sheep. It also made a great illustration for Jesus because Jesus wants to do the same for us. He wants, us, he wants to lead us towards goodness. He is the shepherd and we are the sheep. Jesus can be our GPS for life if we'll listen to his voice and follow his lead. I mean, imagine having a voice to guide you through life. You might not have to pay a toll three times or get stuck going in circles. A voice that speaks love, forgiveness, comfort, a voice that brings courage, peace and hope, a voice that knows what's best for us and beckons us towards something greater. When I was a kid, I can remember playing out on the street and my mum would call, kids, home time. And the funny thing was, it was only me and my brothers that would respond. We knew the sound of our mum's voice. The other kids would just ignore it. And I guess we would sometimes too, when we wanted a little bit more playtime. But because we'd spent so much time with mum, because we'd listened to her talk and sing to us, us kids knew her voice. It was easy to recognise. And the same is true when it comes to our relationship with God. By spending time with Jesus, we get to know his voice. Do you remember when you had to tune into the right frequency on the radio to hear the station? You didn't question that it was playing. You just had to find the right frequency and tune in. Well, God is always speaking, but it's about us tuning in to his frequency. In the Bible, God called to Samuel three times before someone finally told him, that's God speaking to you. Or Gideon received a revelation, but he wasn't sure if it was God speaking. So he said, show me a sign and prove it is you, God. And he asked not just once, not just twice, but three times. Just like we learned the sound of our parents' voice, we've got to also learn what God's voice sounds like. So how do we tune in to God's frequency? I was thinking about this with my kids. How do I teach them to hear God's voice over and above all the other voices of the world vying for their attention? And there is a lot of them. So as the girls are laying in bed at night, we'll pause for a moment and we'll listen to Jesus as we call it. We're still, silent, and simply listen for what God wants to say to us. It doesn't take long, a minute if we're lucky, but man, I've been amazed by some of the things they'll hear. Things like, I will always be with you. I love you. I'll help you fall asleep quickly tonight. You won't have any bad dreams. Hey, you did a great job today. I'm here to help you. I'm astounded by the things that they say and how similar they sound to what I hear or read in the Bible. You are my child who I love. I am so proud. Or I am yours and you are mine. This is a great practice for all of us. If you wanna tune in to the voice of God, then I encourage you each day to set a timer for 10 minutes to find a comfy place with no distractions and simply pray, I'm here, Lord, speak to me and then wait. See what happens.
Now, a few things could happen. You could find yourself watching the clock or your mind racing, thinking about things. That's very normal. Just jot them down and then clear your mind. If you fall asleep, that's okay, it happens. Don't give yourself a hard time. Keep doing it, just persist, even if you hear nothing at first, because it will change your life. If you hear a voice aloud or even just in your thoughts, fantastic. The voice of God is not condemning, but it's beckoning, just like that shepherd that lovingly calls to his sheep. God will never say anything that contradicts scripture. It always lines up. So reading our Bibles helps us to learn who God is, what he's like, how he sounds and how he responds. So if you're unsure, ask yourself, does this give me life? Does it align with the Bible? Or talk to someone that you trust about it. The more we spend time with the shepherd, the more we recognize and trust his voice. In these anxious, changing and challenging times, we need to hear the voice of Jesus and to experience his comfort and compassion. Jesus knows all that is happening in your life, in our church, in the world. He knows the challenges, the hurts, the tricky decisions, the loneliness, and he wants to speak peace and forgiveness. He wants to whisper his love, acceptance and salvation to you and to give you fresh revelation and strength. As the shepherd cares for his sheep, Jesus is calling to you. He's beckoning you into places of comfort, protection, provision, safety, a hope and a future. If you're not sure what you should do next, if you've looked around and thought, how did I get here? Jesus is a real life GPS voice to guide us, show us and lead us in living our life to the full. So let Jesus be your shepherd. Follow his voice. God bless.